Hey everybody, Sterling R. Jackson. Today we're going to talk about the ridiculousness of trying to sing like Brian Johnson from ACDC. So come along with me. All right, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a reaction of him singing live. Um, it's important to not just hear these things on an album or hear just a vocal only. It's it's important to me a lot of times to hear these people do this stuff live, to hear you know how sustainable it is, how long they can do it, how healthy it is. All those different kinds of things play into this. So uh, without further ado, I pulled up um, Thunderstruck because ridiculously hard to sing for him as well. <laughs> um, if you haven't already paid attention to this or watched him in an interview, we're talking about somebody with a, a very deep voice. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I, I do remember seeing some interviews a while back, and I think his voice was higher, and it's definitely, you know, gotten deeper with age. He's got a very Scottish deep accent, and um, that was pretty bad. But uh, it's uh, very deep and thick, but he's really, really trained, and his whole life had this kind of distortional, heady kind of mix sound that's just fucking great. And, um, and I'm a big fan. Always have been a big fan. Big fan of Bon Scott, too. I'll talk about him in a later video. But um, without further ado, I wanted to watch a little bit of this and just uh, just be in all of the awesomeness of ACDC. So, like I said, this is uh, Thunderstruck, live at River Plate, December 2009. So I'm going to try to skip ahead here. Hey, so uh, guess what? YouTube didn't like me using that clip and blocked every attempt I, uh, every attempt I made to put up that video. So now, instead, I put in um, just the vocal-only isolated track of Brian Johnson's voice with Thunderstruck. I apologize, the, the regular video is up on Patreon. No, this is not some weird ploy to probably try to get people to join me on Patreon. I don't care about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I've never had that happen. 15 years on YouTube now. And, um, and they were just like, nope, nobody can see your video. So apologies. Let's try to continue and pretend that that didn't happen and that the things I was talking about were relevant to, you know what I'm saying. Thank you. I was out in the middle of a railroad track. Thunder. On the ground. And I knew there was no turning back. Thunder. My mind raced and I thought, what could I do? You can hear right there already that he's not actually affixing that much distortion onto his voice. His voice just kind of is doing that naturally. And for a lot of people that are trying to mimic this stuff, myself included, <laughs> our voices don't do that. So we're trying to bear down and put all this distortion in there. And uh, therein lies why I'm making this video to begin with. But you can you can listen to this and tell that he's <clears throat> he's got some of that kind of grit in there already just, uh, just from doing what he does. So... Um, Important to remember the distinctions like this with people's voices. Some people are going to have those parts of their voice that are a little bit more close together so that they can kind of uh, uh, kind of get in there easier. And some people's are, of course, going to be a little bit closer. So remember this. If you're trying to mimic somebody's voice, you're trying to learn how to sing like somebody else, or you have some singer and you're just like, I want to sound like that. It's one thing to try to mimic their tone and their placement and the way that maybe they enunciate. That's all kind of one thing. But then if they distort or they scream, things like that, that's like a whole other kind of set of vocal cords in a way. It's a whole other set of things that are part of their physiology. And, um, you know, you might be able to get one thing, but then if you're trying to do another thing, it gets very difficult. It can be very hard to kind of mimic all these things. So as always, and, and I continue to tell myself, be, be gentle on yourself on this journey because it is a journey. It's not like, I learned how to do this and now I know how to do it. No, you don't. <laughs> it's going to take some time. I'm going to skip ahead to the even higher part. Thunderstruck! 
So, uh, <laughs> Brian is, uh, is also great at being like, all right, this part's hard and changing things on the fly. Um, when I went to see them uh, when I was younger, uh, it's, it's important to explain that his method and the way that he does certain things, he, he gets tired pretty fast because he's not doing things <laughs> completely properly. And he's old. My God, he's probably in his 60s right here. So um, that's amazing. Anyway, uh, some people, you know, they, they turn like 62 and they're just, <laughs> they're just, they're everything. Their body and everything is, <laughs> but anyway, these fuckers are up on stage performing and doing amazing things. And he sounds really, really great. So um, you can tell right away he's not hitting certain notes. I think this might even be a half step down. I don't think it's a whole step, but I think this is a different, um, a different tuning that they're doing. Um, anyway, you can tell some of the notes that he's reaching for, and then some of them that are sitting in the pocket. Uh, either way, changing them on the fly, the energy's there. It's all fantastic, and uh, and I freaking love it. And like I said, I got just goosebumps watching it. There's so many people yelling and screaming and everything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try my best Brian Johnson impression, and then uh, and I'm probably embarrass myself a little bit. I'm gonna try to do it the way that kind of he did it on the record, and then I'll be right back. So um, there was my Brian Johnson impression. Probably better on some days, probably worse on other days. Something you kind of, just like muscle training, you have to kind of get into those muscle groups to try to kind of warm them up. And there's, there's, a, there's a precarious place within that where you can use a little too much and then you start getting tired and then your vocal cord closure and everything starts coming apart and then it's harder and harder the more you try. And there's a, an important part that we should talk about in terms of vocal, everything, when it comes to things like that. Um, first of all, one of the most important things with, with trying to do anything ACDC is that I have all these people that are trying to do it and they blow their voice out within like the first song and they're being really loud. And uh, that is not <laughs> how you go about doing not only Brian Johnson ACDC, but anything. It is not about volume. And I've said this plenty of times. So. Um, it's about bearing down and closing things off and getting smaller and getting quieter. Uh, of course, in this range, when we're talking about these notes way up here. You can't be loud in that, especially as a male, unless you're a really high voiced male and you can you know, get up to a, a C. But even if you are getting up to this high C up here, ah! and, and you're able to hit that, if you're not mixing, then you know it's just the highest note you can get to and then whatever. Anyway, I'm a big fan of mixed voice, this is what you're hearing, a version of mixed voice here, but there's compression around it. So if you want to get to that as well, we'll go over a couple little mixed voice things here too. Remember, these are only so long, I can't make them that much longer. I usually like to extend these videos on Patreon. If you want to join me over there, you can see the extended versions of these, and I break some more things down and give more exercises to try to get uh, into this stuff or to try to develop it. So anyway, first of all, like I said, 
um, we're not overusing air. We are never using extra air. I wrote uh, an album with a guy that, you know, we had to do some screaming in the album and stuff like that. And he could scream sometimes better than me. And then I'd be kind of wondering how he did that. And he's like, I think you need to use more air, dude. And then he would use more air than me and literally blow his voice out within 30 seconds to a minute, literally 30 seconds to a minute. So he sounded great for those <laughs> minute, but, um, and I'm not talking about his voice got tired and didn't sound good. I'm talking about blew his entire voice out for the day where everything was like really screwed up and he could barely talk. And we're talking about a very short thing. So work on sustainability, work on um, controlling your airflow and your compression and things like that. Um, if you can't do it clean, don't do it distorted. If you can't do it clean, don't do it distorted. Um, the point here, especially with something like this, is to build a coordination based on clean so that you can start to push into it and get some volume, get some power behind it, but then kind of put distortion around it or over top of it. So I've talked about these things before, but if we take something kind of decently high for a baritone or a regular male voice, a male voice, uh, usually like a typical baritone tops out here about G4. Um, so if we take a note like this, I should be able to have a nice clean note like that. And then I want to try to find a, a, a distortion over top of it, but not down here. I want to try to find it up here, especially for something like this. So what you kind of heard me do there was compress in a different way. So I'm not compressing down here. I had to kind of readjust myself to compress up here. What I mean by that is I'm trying to hold back the sound so that I can cradle it and kind of grab a hold of it in a sense. So. So if you get into mixed voice too, you'll start to understand this already that we're compressing up here. There's two different things we can find. And we can find this in head voice and chest voice. And this is something I've heard nobody talk about. No vocal coach ever talk about. Threshold compression points. Mixed voice exists up here. Ah, 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 ah. The everything else tends to exist down here. Ah, and you can't take it much higher. Head voice as well. If I mix and I grab a hold of these muscles up here, ah, I can move that higher and I can take it higher and it's more safe and it's easier to do and there's more longevity. Blah, 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 blah. So we take something like this again. First of all, be aware of how much breath you're using. So um, even though I don't like to talk about it that much because people get confused and they try to go too hard, too heavy, too fast, we're holding our breath. Ha, ah, ha, ah, and then I want to focus in on the nasality up here. Ah, and try to focus all my energy into that. Ah, and then I want to try to find some distortion right about where that is. It's actually above that as well, but. Ah, let, me, let me do it just note by note. Ah, so you can tell them. I'm bearing down to do that. And I'm not bearing down all from here too. This is another important thing about trying to do something like this is that you can produce these sounds without that much support or sometimes without any support. Now, should you sing like that forever? No, support is very important and integral to singing. But if you're, if you're, if you're someone, good God, that was a lot of if yours. If you're somebody that's, that's like, am I not pushing hard enough? Maybe I'm not pushing hard enough. It's probably not the case. Um, at least in my experience, most people tend to go too far to that. And dude, you're going to just burn yourself out. If you really need to bear down like a motherfucker uh, from here to get some of this stuff, go back and watch Brian Johnson do it. He is ducking his head in like this because distortion is produced by pushing things backwards. Ah! pushing everything back in terms of replacement backwards. So if you see him walking around like this the whole time, that's because he's pushing that distortion backwards. But he's not, he's walking around. He's waving to the audience. He's putting his hands up. He's not <clears throat> like this. <laughs> I wish you might've seen me kind of do when I'm, I was bearing down into that uh, mic when I was doing mine. Anyway, um, remember about the sustainability of it. If you're doing something and you're getting tired in one song, you're probably doing something wrong or you're going for too much too fast. 
Remember to find something clean first and be excited by your progress with that too. It's exciting to be able to do this stuff. And therein lies another lesson about mixed voice as well, if you're somebody that's struggling with mixed voice. Mixed voice exists, or learning about mixed voice exists, because you're trying to learn how to sing higher. I understand. I got this one song I'm singing and everything's great and then there's some notes I can't reach. That's not really a good reason to learn mixed voice. I mean, it is, but you're probably going to struggle then. Because if you're only putting yourself this far outside of your comfort zone, you're kind of, you're going to struggle. You're going to be like, well, I don't need to learn this whole other set of bullshit <laughs> if I only need to go to here. Can I just like belt or something, you know? Anyway, mixed voice and learning mixed voice, the excitement around the whole thing should be to try to sing crazy shit like this. Guns and Roses. 80s music where rocks and like high stuff put your voice way out of your comfort zone and recognize that as a part of your voice because mixed voice when you first find it is not going to sound anywhere close to this or heavy it's going to sound like this ma, 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 ma. Ah, i was caught in the middle of a railroad track ah. or it might sound a little bit more head voicey or something like that but it's not going to sound powerful and you need to take time to develop it, recognize what you need to do to maintain it and sustain it without getting tired. And like I said, enjoy the ride of that, the excitement of that, and uh, and pay attention. Your voice is gonna change, the way you hit some different notes and stuff is gonna change, but it's all about that journey. So anyway, I talked about like finding some of these things. Let's talk about a couple mixed voice exercises and throw this in. I talked about this in other videos. I talked about this in a one minute clip video. Remember the threshold points I'm talking about. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Pay attention to this goofy part of your voice. Try to find it with what we can do just with scales like this. The important thing about this or mixed voice in general is that you're finding something that maintains your chord closure and allows you to move over that bridge. Maybe not well at first, but it's not ah uh, ha. You're not jumping back and forth and you're not trying to be clever and go ah uh, ha ah. Uh. You're not trying to be like, if I do it really fast, no, it's not about moving fast. It's about finding the musculature that allows you to glide back and forth in some way, shape, or form. Now I'm a little bit tired from all the singing I've been doing today, but it still should kind of give you an idea of how this works. Um, once again, if, if I take something like head voice, and then I try to add some nasality into that. It's kind of going from here to here again, but this is my my grasping point. This is my compression point. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, and there's mix. Ah, ah. And like I said, it might be cartoony at first, but recognize it's an integral part of the voice. It's an important part of the voice. The more you associate it mentally with a part of the voice, as it's not just a goofy. I can do this weird <laughs> screaming, yelling, whatever the hell you want to say. I can do this thing that sounds like um, a cartoon character on fire. Um, the more you think about it that way, the more it will sound like that every time you do it. And you're never going to have the confidence to go out and do this stuff in front of people because you're going to be like, was that good or did that sound like stupid as hell? So think about it as a part of your voice, nasality included. I'll throw this at you. Nasality. So trying to find this compression point up here again, if we use nasality, we're gonna to try to feel it up here. We're gonna move our voice from kind of here to here. Almost feels like we're using another set of vocal cords. And then as we approach the bridge, you can go two ways. You'll notice that you're locked down here and you're starting to flip, or you'll notice that your voice is kind of moving up farther like this and it starts to become more head voicey. That doesn't mean we flip. It just means that we're going, I'll show you. One, remember we're close to the bridge right, right away. So one is, I'm using a little bit of an eh and, an, and a UNG sound. Now you hear my voice duck and get a little bit quieter. That's because you literally hear the resonance and the sound move up behind my soft palate. So it is moving up into head voice. It's moving up into my nasal cavity from here to here. So that's what you're hearing. Now I'll do it the wrong way. And I can only take it so high. So, 
So the resonance is being stopped, it's being locked into here, and I can't go any higher. So uh, another thing about Brian Johnson, like I said, um, low voice, um, these things when you're trying to mimic people, always look up interviews with them and stuff. I just looked up uh, Brian Johnson the other day, or <laughs> Brian Adams, I'm sorry, beautiful voice. Um, you get confused and you're like, man, how does he sound like that or whatever? I bet he's got like a low voice. Nope, he's a smaller dude. He's got a higher voice when he speaks and you're like, I didn't know he would sound like that. Always interesting to look up, but um, good if you're trying to mimic people and good if you're trying to tie some of these things together. I'm gonna give some more of these exercises. I know I haven't covered too much here, but I did a lot of talking. So I'm gonna go over to Patreon and try to give some more exercises with trying to find these things. I appreciate you tuning in. I will see you soon.